what's going on now? We're back here with a sturdy spirit of justice. Things are occurring. So, Dirk was shot three times in the chest, and then uh, we, they were trying to argue that he got channeled and brought back to life, therefore, and then killed Inga. And they're proposing that... I don't really understand why, <laughs> but they proposed that that was Dirk as channeled by Maya, which makes sense with the timeline, but it doesn't make sense that Inga would be down there in the place where he was holding Maya if he wasn't holding Maya. Why would he just be hanging around there waiting for Dirk to kill him? I don't know. So once again, I'm just going to kind of be like, okay, maybe I'm just not understanding what's going on here and I'll just let them tell me. <laughs> but we hit a point where we we're basically going to have Dirk declared innocent. Garan finally went, okay, I guess that thing you said about Dats and the dog and Albi and everything, I'll finally just accept that that makes sense instead of just ignoring it. <laughs> they were going to let Dirk go, uh, but we stopped because Rafo was like, hey, this doesn't feel right. Uh, Naito was like, what? This doesn't feel right. And everything we know about Amaro... Well, what little we know about Amara would kind of suggest that that just doesn't feel right. And of course, as the players, we know that we haven't gotten into the arson case yet, et cetera, et cetera. To avert further tragedy, his death was an unfortunate necessity. We're talking about Inga now. Because we had said that Amara killed him and we don't think that's right. Further tragedy. Over the past several years, Minister Inga had been rapidly expanding his power. He had established the secret police and was relentless in his pursuit of the insurgents. Oh, sorry, yes, before we carry on, one other thing. Does the note about the coup? Where's the note about the coup? Oh, we don't have it anymore, do we? Never mind. I was gonna say that, um, I couldn't remember if that thing that said a coup, we're planning a coup to murder the queen, mentioned Garan by name, or if it just said the queen. If it just said the queen, then that make what that might mean is that Inga was the one who conspired to kill Amara with the fire and all. Oh. Anyway, well, he said they poison. The queen. Well, the, you can poison someone, I guess, with a, a sleeping draft or whatever. He had established the secret police and was relentless in his pursuit of the insurgents. He even had the overwhelming support of the people, but still he was not satisfied. Hungry for more power, he began planning a coup d'etat. You mean his plot involving the Founder's Orb, which led to Maya Faye's abduction? Yes. Minister Inga planned to use that orb to gain access to great spiritual power, after which he would assassinate Goran and usurp the throne. As machinations were reminiscent of that terrible tragedy of 23 years ago. And as one affected by that incident, Amara vowed never to allow a repeat of such events. Yes, and the Holy Mother delivered unto me the perfect opportunity to fulfill my vow. Security amid the courtyard was rather light due to the rite of channeling, and Inga had barricaded himself in the tomb with his hostage away from prying eyes. That's not true. The hostage was out with us. That was Dirk. Maya was channeling him, I thought you said. I thought this, that's what we said, right? Or else I'm like, for you, maybe I don't understand anything again. I knew I would never again have such a perfect opportunity, so. At 2 p.m. during the rite of channeling, I slipped into the tomb and slew the minister. <laughs> All right. <laughs> My thing works. It's such a miracle. My bracelet. Apollo. Yep. It seems this trial's far from over. <clears throat> Queen Omara, I believe you're still hiding something. But if you want to keep on playing this game of hide-and-seek, then let's start with that last statement you made. So I can only assume that, not unlike Dirk, if she's hiding something, it's for Nayuta's benefit or Dirk's somehow. Either she's casting herself, like, this is kind of like the uh, case with Abbott and me and all, where this is a situation of a family being ripped apart by the Defense Culpability Act. People having to incriminate themselves because that's the only way to save their family and friends. Did I start that sentence with either? There was no either. I think that's what's going on here. <laughs> anyway, that's my Im impression. Then let's start with that last statement you made. If I must. Do you think she messes with this thing has somehow? Her finger is a little twitchy. Over here. Oh no, she's just tippity tapping that? Is that just how... How she goes, or is that is that a tick on this first portion here? No, it was definitely going a lot a moment ago and not now. <laughs> so I slipped into the tomb and slew the minister isn't the bit that's making her freak out, but at 2 p.m. during the rite of channeling. Oh, are we going to say that the rite of channeling was not actually at that time, and so Garan could have done it, and she was covering for Garan instead or something? Anyway, gotcha! That was a pretty fast one. Queen Amara... You're not very comfortable talking about the two o'clock ride of channeling, are you? I can tell because a finger on your left hand twitched almost imperceptibly when you did. <laughs> Don't call it that! <laughs> I'm not even 100% sure your finger twitched. Apollo, please! <laughs> and that pose you make. Is there something about your chest that makes you nervous? 
Whatever do you mean? The murder occurred at 2 p.m. And I'm pretty positive Amara was in the tomb at the time. So then why is she so self-conscious about her chest when she talks about the rite? Is that medallion protecting, like, covering up a wound or something? The rite of channeling? Didn't Albi snap a picture of it? Queen Amara, I have here a picture of the rite of channeling. It was secretly taken by a certain individual. As their lawyer, I'm, I'm electing not to mention them by name. <laughs> Objection! Objection! Such insolence! I would have the perpetrator's name at once! Uh, uh, sorry, no can do. You, you see, I, um, I, I just happened to find it on, on the ground, so... Do you take me for a fool? Uh, but we'll discuss the photo origin a little later, because right now... <clears throat> there's something much more pressing at hand. I believe this photo merits further examination. I just wish there was more to see in it than the darkness and more darkness. Yeah, you got me. Um, you got me. Uh, was that Shelly to kill her? <laughs> who she was talking to? I only, I only just noticed it bears a passing re resemblance to him. We might be able to make out a few more details with some image adjustments. Let's ask Emma if she can help. Oh, if you say so. Well, if please summon Detective Sky to the Hall of Justice. It's like a Polaroid. Taken by like an eight-year-old. <laughs> Are we sure he's gonna be able to zoom and enhance this one? I mean, it's the near future. Technology is wild. Here you are. I was able to obtain a much more clearer image by raising the brightness. <laughs> Alright, sure, you just raised the brightness on like <laughs> whatever. <laughs> right? So this is what Apollo was talking about. Amara's chest something being off about that. So this is Queen Amara who is doing this and not Garon, I guess, is what we're getting at. They do look kinda similar. So I mean the hair is all wrong, but there's hair dye and, and Amara has shown that she can just shape shift basically. So hmm? what's that right there? An injury. No, wait, I think it's a burn scar. Channeling photo updated in the court record, which would imply this is Amara, and therefore Queen Garan could have been in the uh, temple at that at uh, the tomb at that time. Wait a second, Your Eminence, you don't have a burn scar like that on your chest. What's going on here? If the person in this photo isn't Queen Garan, then who is it? Take that! I said to myself. <laughs> Queen Amara, the person in the photo isn't Queen Garan. It's you, posing as her, isn't it? Um... The two of you look quite similar. But that's no surprise, considering you're sisters. Even the shape and position of your facial tattoos are almost exactly the same, but you wouldn't be able to see the diamond one, right? I hadn't considered that possibility priorly. And you're both capable of channeling spirits. Therefore, it would have been easy for you to impersonate Queen Garan. <sighs> Queen Amara, you have a burn scar on your chest, don't you? Please remove your round mandala, mon that thing, so you can see what's behind it for ourselves. It's shattered. <laughs> ah! Look! It's the exact same burn scar as the one in the photo. Uh, I don't understand. I knew it. So the person in this photo really is... Yes, it's Queen Amara. This is absurd. Are you suggesting they switch places? Amara's confession earlier was also false. <laughs> Mother, what is the meaning of this? Don't you see? This changes everything! We know for a fact that this photo was taken at 2pm, this exact time the murder took place. But that would mean Queen Amara couldn't possibly have committed this crime! <laughs> exactly! She now has an ironclad alibi, so Minister Inga's killer couldn't have been Queen Amara. I I'm afraid I no longer follow defense. Was it not Queen Amara who channeled the minister and the accused to stage the crime? <laughs> yes, that fact has not changed. We have evidence placing her at the scene of the crime. And Dirk could have only been there in the tomb if she were channeling him. Which means... <clears throat> While Queen Amara did use spirit channeling to stage the crime, she didn't kill Minister Inga. His real killer is someone else. Bukaka! What's going on here? Was her mercifulness covering for someone? If Queen Amara's not the killer, then who is it? Isn't it obvious? 
Why was this rite held in the first place if Queen Garan wasn't going to perform it? Who was behind the two sisters switching places, and for what reason? The answers to these questions, along with the establishment of Queen Amara's alibi, obliterate a certain someone else's alibi. Take that! Why, that's that's the person who's in this building. <laughs> Is this some kind of a joke? No, Your Majesty. I could never joke about something so grave. The only one who seemed to have a perfect alibi at the time of the murder was Her Eminence, Garan Sigatar Karine. Queen Amara, didn't your sister Queen Garan ask you to pose as her and perform the rite of channeling? I. And didn't she also have you drive Dirk's spirit away from his face body and then stage the crime to make it look like he was the minister's killer? And at 2 p.m., while you were performing the rite of channeling as Queen Garan, didn't she kill Minister Inga while disguised as Dirk? Well, your mercifulness! <sighs> It's no use trying to hide it any longer. You need to tell us the truth, now! Mother... Justice... Minister Inga's true killer... is... She just gets shot. Uh, mother! No! <laughs> what? <laughs> I really did it! Your evidence! My life is yours! Isn't he one of Garan's royal guards? G Queen Amara! Bailiff, arrest that guardsman! Mother! G Garan couldn't have. Could she? You're all very calm from some rumor an assault rifle was just fired into someone. Someone call for an ambulance, quickly now! <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> to be continued. <laughs> At least I didn't die in that segment. But sure, another to be continued. Why not? <laughs> it's messed up. <laughs> I mean, I feel bad, but Queen, why would Queen go on do that when... <laughs> That points to her. May 19th, High Court of Crying at accused lobby. <laughs> After the gunshot, we decided not to call up the trial. <laughs> we were all feeling pretty gutsy. <laughs> we're lucky the ambulance made it in time. In time for what? She thinks she's fine? That was like right through the stomach. I mean, not that you, no one's ever survived something like that, but how can you already be sure she's alive? We've been forced into a recess for now while things get straightened out. I, I can't believe what just happened! Tell me about it. Do you think Garon put that guard up to it? If she did, she's gonna regret it. No one gets away with something like that on my watch. <sighs> Poor Queen Amara. Your benevolence. Any news on her condition? She is undergoing surgery at the hospital as we speak. They are giving her a 50-50 chance of survival, though. But Kron, justice will be served! Why? Why did this happen? <sighs> Just as we were finally reunited... Oh, Queen Amara. Um, what was that about being reunited? Hmm? Oh, it's nothing. Right. How are you, Hornhead? Dark Sodmati was your father in all but blood, after all. Thank you for your concern, your benevolence. But I'm fine. Right now we still have a trial to see through. So that's what I'm going to stay focused on. Hornhead. You are sturdier than your stature lets on. <laughs> Likewise, your benevolence. Just don't ever do it, okay, Apollo? <sighs> Dark. That was a real shocker, all right. Can't believe the dragon's dead. That's. Say, AJ, I was wondering. When Dirk disappeared after I freed him, that's because Amara turned back into herself, right? Yeah, I suppose so. But I don't know if it was because Dirk's spirit willed it, or if it was a part of Garan or Amara's plan. Man, a dream of revolution. Now what are we gonna do? Is this it? Don't give up yet. There's a very good chance that Garan is the real culprit in all this. And if we can prove her guilt in court... Hey, you're right. That could be just the push we need. The dream lives on. Yes, it does. You know what that means, AJ? The fate of the revolution rests squarely on your shoulders. 
<laughs> All the day's work. Ah, who am I kidding? That's a ton of pressure. But this is where Dirk gave his life for, so I have to do this for him. For him. Let me say that like a... Anyway. The Honorable Rebel Dirk Sogmati. I... Would have loved to have spoken with him while he yet lived. Did you not get a chance at the detention center? Really? Ah! <laughs> Why not? I mean, he seemed like quite an interesting man. Did she bump her head or something earlier? The trial is about to resume. The defenses are to report the courtroom at once. You're not gonna shoot me, are you? Already? After what just happened? The first thing Gron will do is respond to that last accusation, so you'd better stay on your toes, Apollo. I will, Mr. Wright. Ready or not, Garon. Here comes justice! That's what I've been waiting for! Gotta give him the old look at he split, the old one-two, if you see what I mean. The legal one-two. <laughs> May 19th, High Court of Kurain! Ha! Oh, I thought we were gonna kick down the door again. Sorry. <laughs> I was all ready for my Emperor's New Groove bit. Now then, let us resume today's proceedings. And if everyone could just keep their trigger fingers off the goddamn trigger, please. Huh? No, Sadmati. Where's Naita? I must offer my apologies. I never imagined a rail guardsman would do such a thing. What? He wasn't acting under your orders? How dare you cast your suspicions upon her eminence? <laughs> Look, you can only say so much of that was me casting suspicion. It's quite all right, your majesty. Suspicion is only natural under such circumstances. But rest assured that he acted alone, for I knew nothing of his plans. I don't believe that for a second. Now then, your majesty, regarding the murder of my husband, Minister Inga, I would like to offer a new possibility. A new possibility, you say? Indeed, for during the break, the real killer confessed to me. What? Bailiff, call the witness to the stand. It'll be Nayuta, right? The real killer confessed? What she got up her sleeve this time? I have a really bad feeling about this. Gotta be, because it's the only one who would cover- who would even think about lying to cover for Amara. And indeed, it would be really, really weird writing to build Nayuta up as an important character and then just kind of write him out of this final trial, so... <laughs> of course he's coming to, in some importance into this last, uh, bundle of testimony, so to speak. And it usually happens that you end up exonerating or proving the rival prosecutor's guilt by the end. With the exception, maybe, of Ace Attorney 2? And four, I guess. <sighs> uh, he's the one who confessed? Prosecutor Salmari, you're the real killer! I questioned him during the recess, as I felt that Amara had been covering for someone. We've already proven... Dirk... Not guilty. I mean, we pushed to continue, I guess, but... That's- that's no longer in question, right? <laughs> Dirk is innocent, so really this should be counted as a separate trial and held another day or something. But I get we want to have the drama of if Mara's gonna live by the end. Which I hope she does, to be fair. I hope that when her breakdown happens, all these five Magatamas explode. Like- like a health bar. <laughs> I questioned him during the recess as I felt that Amara had been covering for someone. So it was that he finally confessed his crime to me. Nayuta, you didn't really do it, did you? Her eminence speaks the truth. It was I who killed Justice Minister Inka. Nayuta! Peace! Oh, Prosecutor Sadmadi, are you absolutely certain about this? A confession of this nature is grave indeed. Yes, I am certain. For I killed him by my own hand. <laughs> At last, the real killer has been revealed. How are we supposed to respond to this? <clears throat> I'm testifying, of course. Nayuta, retract your confession, now! Mr. Justice, it is not yet time for your cross-examination. Who cares about that? Admit it! It was Queen Garano who put you up to this. She forced you into giving a confession, didn't she? Shut up! You are out of line, Mr. Justice. Learn some self-restraint. <sighs> But... Or do you have something that might prove that I did not commit this murder? I... That is... Yeah. What do you think you're doing, you idiot? Truly, the truth can set us free. Looks like Ron got to him somehow. I definitely didn't see this coming. 
<laughs> Sorry. Nayuta, why are you doing this? We still don't know what she has held over him all these years. We assume it's not just Amara, because even once it seems... Well, I don't know. I don't know. Why would you sacrifice even your life to do Garan's bidding? Whatever the case may be, prosecutor Sadmari, your testimony, please. Well, let's hear it, pal. I think we're going to be still in upbeat temp uh, up tempo testimony, or is it going to be back to low tempo and we're going to have a, a ways more to work through? Night, the witness testimony, now you touch confession. Still up tempo. Good sign. I could not remain silent while her eminence fell under suspicion for this crime. It was I who murdered Justice Master Inga. He had to die for the future of Karain. I consider it divine judgment cast upon a fiend who sought to assassinate our monarch. My mother was simply covering for me. I am ashamed to let her go so far for my sake. So it's another case where Nayuta's covering for Amara, who was covering for Dirk, who was covering for Amara, and, and Nayuta. <laughs> Not unlike, um, Habit in me and, uh, Believe in me's case. You do understand what you're doing, right, Nayuta? You're sentencing yourself to death if you're found guilty! If that is the court's verdict, then so be it. I must obey the law above all else. The law, Nayuta? Or the queen? Objection! Objection. I am the law! <laughs> Enough. This blather has nothing to do with the witness's testimony. Please, address any issues you may have during the cross-examination defense. No, oh, I will. I'm going to blow his problematic testimony to smithereens. I want to push on everything. Cross-examination. Nayuta's confession. I still only have two. Good. Two souls. I could not remain silent while her eminence fell under suspicion for this crime. It was I who murdered Justice Minister Inga. He had to die for the future of Kurain. <laughs> I just do it all as James. He had to die for the future of Kurain. I consider divine judgment cast upon a fiend who sought to assassinate our monarch. My mother was simply covering for me. I am ashamed that I let her go so far for my sake. To think that my YouTube would confess to the crime. Can't say I saw that coming. Why, Nayuta? Why? Why are you putting yourself on the line for Garan? I wonder if Garan has something on him. I don't think so. I mean, Amara is currently fighting for her life, so... I don't see what Garan could threaten him with. But maybe that's just it. Maybe there's something else that we don't know about. If Amara and Garan are swapping positions so frequently, like, maybe... Garan was Nayuta's real mom. Dirk had an affair with both of them. I don't know. I don't know. He got me. It could be one of many things. This is a one riddle I just will not be able to figure out up front, I don't think. Right, I could not remain silent while her eminence fell under suspic suspicion for this crime. Hold it! Shrikara! <laughs> you kept quiet all this time, even though you were the real killer. Yes. And I accept that what I have done can never be forgiven. But I never imagined suspicion would fall upon the queen herself. Prosecutor Sadmani has placed the future of our kingdom above his own life. He is taking responsibility for his crime and is showing his loyalty to queen and country. Without a monarch on the throne, Karain would be plunged into chaos. I could never wish that upon my homeland. That is why I had to let the truth be known. What a bunch of baloney. I'm going to ask you again, Nayuta. Did you really kill Minister Inga? Yes. No matter how many times you ask, Minister Justice, the truth is immutable. I guess he was doing that to try and prompt a reaction from the bracelet. To no avail. It was I who murdered Justice Minister Inga. Hold it! <clears throat> It's not too late. You can still retract your confession before the verdict is rendered. There is no retracting the truth. One either tells it or does not tell it. It is that simple. Ugh. Why do you always have to be so stubborn, Nayuta? I hate how you never listen to reason once you get like this. I think we'll need some evidence before we can get him to retract his confession. Either that or we'll have to force a retraction out of him by appealing to what's in his heart. It's not going to be easy either way. Prosecutor Sadmari, what was the motive for your crime? I had reason enough to kill a Minister Inga. He had to die for the future of Kurai. Hold it! What do you mean by that? Minister Inga was planning to assassinate her eminence in a coup d'etat. I had to nip this evil in the bud, even if it cost me the purity of my soul. So you're saying the death of another is a reasonable price to pay to protect the Queen? Long have we remained independent under the authority of our spirit medium queens. We command the people's awe and respect with the power to commune with the dead. Without such a monarch, our kingdom would lose its standing in the world. But if spirit channeling is so important, why did you have Queen Amara perform the rite? I'm afraid my elder sister is quite capricious. She would fulfill her duty only when the desire struck, as sporadic as that was. It was, therefore, something she did on a whim. There was no meaning behind it. 
That's what a bunch of bunk! She was in hiding! A meaningless whim? It's hard to press a statement like that. Now, if I may return my, to my testimony. I consider it divine judgment cast upon a fiend who sought to assassinate our monarch. Hold it! Divine judgment? Yes, I render judgment upon the minister on behalf of the Holy Mother. Are you saying that the Holy Mother guided you? No. Her holiness would never condone killing in her name regardless of circumstances. As such, I believe my defiled soul will be damned to hell. But I do not regret what I have done. I willingly sacrificed my soul to protect this kingdom's future. <laughs> Step out of it already, Nayuta! So his motive comes from a place of faith, huh? Why does that sound completely credible when it's coming from him? Well, Amara expressed a similar motive. As for her mercifulness, she is truly deserving of her title. My mother was simply covering for me. I am ashamed I let her go so far for my sake. Hold it! So you killed Minister Inga and Queen Amara staged the crime. Is that how it went? Precisely. My mother is as clever as she is kind. She sought to conceal my crime by taking all of the guilt upon herself. Something seems odd about that, but I'm not quite sure just yet. Yet another lie. I need to poke a hole in his testimony, but how? Nayuta, could it be you didn't know Nana's real identity, or you told Amara what to do? Why would either of those book holders test for me? Actually, he did seem surprised when Nana was revealed, right? I mean, I mean, I don't, I see that that seems like the better answer than told Amara what to do because that makes it sound like he instructed her to kill Inga. But I don't understand how either of these overtly change his testimony. Well, I suppose. I, okay, I don't know. No, 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 you didn't realize that Nana was actually Queen Amara, your own mother. That is not as strange as you might think. Much time had passed since we last met, after all. Uh, right. Twenty-three years ago, was it? When Dirk saved her after the supposed assassination attempt. No, Mr. Justice. It was fifteen years ago that Dirk abducted my mother. Lending maybe a bit more credence to whatever my theory about Rafa and Namara. I mean, they kind of have outright said that, I think. That at least Rafa and Namara had some prior relationship if not mother-daughter. It was 15 years ago that Dirk abducted my mother. Huh? That's weird. Are you sure about that? I remember it clearly. I was around 10 years old at the time. Nayuta, please add that last statement to your testimony. And so they want me to put the photograph there because our assumption thus far was that this little babby was Nayuta, so what we're gonna get at now is that this is actually Rafa, I guess? OBJECTION! You're saying that Dirk made off with Queen Amara 15 years ago. But that's strange, because I heard something very different from Dirk. He said that they ran off together 23 years ago. That is impossible. I know for a fact it was 15 years ago. Well, I have evidence that contradicts your statement. How do you explain this photo? Dirk said it was taken 23 years ago. He said that? He did, but if we take what you just said as fact, then there's something in this photo that doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> well, this doesn't make any sense to me, so I suppose I should ask... What does not make any sense if the photo is only 15 years old? Since our assumption, their assumption, was that this is Nayuta. Mine was that it was Rafa. <laughs> take, that! take that! That would be the thing that doesn't make sense. Nayuta, this discrepancy may not be directly related to this case, but I don't think we can simply overlook it either. Dirk said that the baby in the photo was you. No, he didn't. <laughs> he said it wasn't Apollo. <laughs> but that doesn't make any sense if the photo's only 15 years old. After all, you said you were around 10 then, right? <laughs> He's definitely sweating bullets over there, over something. Apollo, if this baby isn't Nayuta... Wait, you don't think... Did Queen Amara have another child while she was on the run? What? <sighs> And just, what if that child were being held hostage? Nayuta, is that why you obey Queen Garan's every command? You presume too much. <sighs> and that's why Queen Amara was trying to take the rap as well. To protect this other child. A child born 15 years ago. There'd have to be someone who's around 14 or 15 years old now. <sighs> this is just a guess. But I believe I know someone who fits the bill. This also explains the strange behavior. This is the child who was born to Dirk and Queen Amara 15 years ago. Trucy Wright. <laughs> it was Nana, <laughs> your honor. Take 
that! Uh, I'm sorry, no take that just yet. All those strange statements she kept making. Now they all make sense. Prosecutor Sadmari, may I ask something? Of course, Your Benevolence. I, um, I've been meaning to ask you this since yesterday. Did you know about Queen Amara? And about me? From where did you hear such a thing? From Mother. And only yesterday. Rafa was carrying on about telling the truth to the people. So I told her. I told her what the truth really was. For it is up to a mother to discipline her child. I see. I... I... I cannot accept this! Is something the matter, your benevolence? Queen Amara is lying! It makes no sense! Queen Amara would not have killed my father! Why? Why did this happen? Just as we were finally reunited. Oh, Queen Amara. Now I see, Nayuta, why you do what you're do told. <sighs> the other child born to Dirk and Queen Amara was... Hold it! Oh, hold it. Does he not have a hold it? Mr. Justice, I believe I know what you are about to say. But I cannot allow you to name an innocent soul as the child of terrible sinners. I thought you might try to stop me. After all, simply revealing this information endangers who you've been trying to protect. <sighs> I think this should make it clear what I'm talking about. This is the- this is the crack in your armor. That's not a word we tend to say these days. This is the crack in your armor. The reason why you fear for your sibling's reputation. That would be because the... Which, where's the one that says the, uh... Idea of sins of the father visit upon his children. Yes, that's the one. Take that! And that is... A file full of information that Dirk collected on what happened 23 years ago. A particular note right now is what's written here. The, the sins of the father are visited upon his children. This deeply held idea is why you were expelled from the royal family. Which means it wouldn't bode well for your sibling either, if she were revealed to be Dirk's daughter. <laughs> you became a prosecutor to bring down Queen Garon, but at some point you came to serve the very regime you despised. And that was because the queen found this crack in your armor. That's how she came to use your sister against you. I... I... Hold it! Nayuta! Have you been keeping this secret all this time? Have you been trying to protect me? You are an innocent party to all this. I live only to safeguard the law and serve the country and queen from which it flows. One such as you who is destined to ascend the throne need not fret over one such as I. No, I cannot accept that. What you say is... it's... malarkey! Don't you even care what happens to you? Before country, queen, law, and everyone's future, my personal feelings are of no consequence. That is why I resigned myself to my fate. I know I must accept the status quo without any thoughts of change. Spoken like a true prosecutor and patriot. I shall continue to rule Karayin until the day Rafa succeeds me, for that is what is best for our kingdom. I know, your eminence. Yours is no small sacrifice, but I promise you this, in exchange for your life. The child shall remain safe, and the kingdom shall pr prosper. That is all I can ask for within my meager existence. Mayuta, is this really the new you? Resigning yourself to the will of another, and killing any hope you held for the future? No, the Nayuta I knew would never let himself be turned into this. Now, your majesty, if you would hand down your verdict. I assume this is said, it was going to have to be like, You still got the will of the dragon in you, you didn't confiscate the badge! Objection! Objection! You can say you're simply accepting your fate, Nayuta, but I know that deep down there's still hope in your heart. Oh, holy mother, preserve me. It's the kind of hope that perseveres through the most desperate of times. And it's what binds you, me, and Dirk together, as a family. I know because this has demonstrated to me that you haven't lost all hope just yet. Take 
Take that! His... When you interrogated Dirk, you confiscated all of his possessions as potential evidence. All except this. Did you take your attorney's badge too? No, oh, no. Well, I thought it strange, but... Just when it looked like he was going to take it from me, he changed his mind. So tell me, Nayuta, why didn't you take his badge? You couldn't bear to take it from him, could you? And I know why. It's because this badge means something special to us. Hey, Dirk. Why do you still wear your badge? You're not a lawyer anymore, right? This badge is my heart and soul, son. I'll never stop trying to realize my dream. Not until my very last breath. A dragon. A dragon never yields, right? Exactly. Ayuta, Apollo, I vow to restore Karain's legal system to its rightful state one day. I want to pass on to you a world where you can live free from the fear of tyranny. You may say you've given up, but that's not how it really is, is it? You never gave up, and you never will, because you still believe that all the wrongs will be righted someday, don't you? You are very perceptive, Mr. Justice. It may very well be as you say. He hasn't got him a paw yet, though. Why did I not confiscate this badge? Even I did not know. Until now. Perhaps I was waiting for him to save me. Save you? Yes, save me. Like he did on that day. Ayuta! Apollo! Hold on! I'm coming! But father wouldn't risk his life to save his own children. Ayuta, Apollo, don't you ever hesitate to call when you need me, understand? Someday, he would come and free our family from the chains of the past. Perhaps, deep down, that is what I believed. I believed in Dirk, our father. This life needs to calm itself. Naita, I knew you- However, it was but a dream. And now that dream has died. Murdered, along with Dirk. So now, as the eldest, the responsibility falls squarely onto me. No matter the cost, I must protect her. Please, try to understand, Apollo. Understand why I shall bear all this sin. It is the only way. But such insolence! Such insolence. <clears throat> you have wasted more than enough of my time, lawyer. Do you not see the futility of your desperate floundering, the immutability of his duty? It is time to accept defeat. <sighs> I mean, he basically just admitted that it wasn't him who killed her, though, right? Killed him, uh, Inga. <laughs> Now watch as the hammer of justice comes down upon your dear brother. Your majesty, the verdict if you will. Uh, yes, your Objection. eminence! Objection! Wait a second! What do I do? Does the defense wish to raise an objection? Uh, um, there's gotta be some way to save Naita. Something about the, uh, the arson, surely. Apollo, it all goes back to that incident 23 years ago. It's branded him the son of a criminal. So if he could once and for all prove that Dirk didn't try to assassinate Amara, right, Nayuta and Rafa's father would no longer be viewed as a criminal. But I thought there wasn't any evidence left, because it was all destroyed in the fire, and Dirk investigated the matter for years but never managed to learn anything new. Really? Nothing at all? Could an exceptional lawyer like Dirk try that long and really uncover nothing at all? He had over two decades, Apollo. Huh? I'm talking about the photograph, of course, because now we have his face. He's right. I doubt Dirk would have gone to his grave without discovering something new. He must have secretly planted something to topple Garan with somewhere. Take another look at the evidence. You just might find what we need to break out of the situation with in there. Got it. <sighs> if the defense is done stalling for time, I shall now render my verdict. No, wait! About the assassination attempt 23 years ago, the defense has some new information it would like to share. You do? 
while we had intended to deliberate that case in the course of this trial... Dirk, did you leave something behind for me? Is there some connection I'm missing here? Oh, very well then. What is the source of your new information about the case from 23 years ago? I'm pretty sure it's the photograph, but let me just read through the, this document here. Oh, well, I guess um, it's uh, they either want me to save the assassination file or the photograph here. What we're getting at is that since he dug up, he eventually dug up the photo, photo of uh, Paula's father, this, any pictures of him were burned up in the fire is, is no longer true. But I don't know whether they want me to say that by pressing the assassination or the photo. Probably the photo, right? Because he said, did, did Dirk leave me with something? Which is, Dirk like literally gave this directly to Apollo first thing. Take that! A photograph? Yes. Do you recall the traveling musician who died in that fire 23 years ago? How could anyone forget such a painful chapter in our history? The poor fellow was caught up in the blaze that was meant for Queen Amara. We never knew his identity though, as his belongings were burnt to ashes. Well, about that. The truth is, uh, he was my biological father. Oh? I'm sorry, this light is absolutely going ham, and I'm not sure why. What? Why, of course. With his photo and her benevolence. Exactly. We might be able to prove Dirk completely innocent. So Dove Justice is his real name, and I guess Dirk is just saying, what, what we're saying is that Dirk uncovered that along with the photograph somehow. Wh whomever gave him the photograph also knew his name, I guess. Like, knew more than just his stage name. Exactly. We might be able to prove Dirk completely innocent, and that would free her from the infamy of having criminal blood in her veins. Because here in Karain, we can witness the final memories of the dead. What utter nonsense! There was no evidence left in the wake of that place. That's what you think. But Dirk went to the ends of the earth to bring this little souvenir back for us. He did. <laughs> yep. Boy, is it the best piece of evidence ever. He knew that with it, we'd finally be able to conclusively settle the matter here in court. And save his children. <laughs> Your Majesty. The defense requests that we hold a divination seance for this new victim. Objection. <laughs> What a waste of time. The events of 23 years have passed have already been deliberated at length. Objection! Objection. <laughs> but wasn't Dirk on trial for that incident as well today? So we wouldn't be doing our jobs if we, if we failed to look into this new lead, would we? Ugh. <laughs> that, was, that was me slamming the gavel. I don't know why I did an Apollo effort noise for that. As the presiding judge, I will now share my thoughts on the matter. That yeah, seems fair enough. The attempted assassination of Queen Amara... Okay, I'm just going to turn this off. It's not... <laughs> Not helping. <laughs> the attempted assassination of Queen Amara is a case we can ill afford to leave open. And I believe that the final memories of the victim will prove to be very important. Next time on Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice, because that's all the time we have for now! But this feels like this seance could very well be the last, the last thing we do in this case. We prove it was Garan who set fire to Amara's residence. Kind of wraps everything up. Boy, I, um... Uh, not looking forward to when we get in there and I see like eight things wrong with it again. And I'm all like, I don't know which one it is! And we just have to die. But I can still say that, the, the, uh, again, this case has taken a much cooler direction than I thought it had at first. Yay. I have many thoughts to give to this game at the end of game review. Um, I'm a little nervous for that, to be honest, because I don't even know how I'm going to sift through them all. <laughs> well, that's all for now. Next video on the channel is going to be... What is it? Omori, I think. Yeah, Omori over Omori EX playthrough. Where we got through... We, get, we carved out a huge chunk of it, actually, uh, in this episode, and got, like, four achievements, as well as saw some very neat and interesting lore stuff, so it's gonna be a pretty long episode, I think, but pretty neat. And that's all for now! Next episode, I'm kind of getting the fence since the next episode might be the end. I could be wrong. We could have, like, another three testimonies to go through, but I'm, I'm not sure. This feels culminated to me, so thank you so very much for coming around. Hopefully I'll see you around, Admiral's gonna be out of here now! Peace! Oh, that point. Oops, I... You forgot what the grab button was somehow? Why would they do that? Oh, I mean, that wasn't panicking. That was controlled outbursts. It's what that was. A known technique in the speedrunning world.